right everyone so welcome to part 2 of our blues piano series in this part we are going to look at a very unique left hand rhythm which can be used to play a ton of blues songs and maybe even rock and roll and then we look at an iconic right hand rhythm which can be used to play everything not just blues even pop music we'll also look at the way the blues time feel works we'll explore a little bit of swing what is swing what does it mean to us and also how you can count this to make it really really organic and natural for the body to respond to all that's going to go on which is a lot really so let's get started right away with the left hand pattern so the left hand blues rhythm pattern is ridiculously easy all you need to do is instead of playing chords we just play we start with a fifth hold which is 1 5 so for every c chord whenever you see c major instead of playing the major third you play the 1 5 but then to make it more dynamic you play 1 5 and 1 6 so you go 1 5 1 6 1 5 1 which for the c chord will be c g c a c g c a that's pretty much it isn't it that's one bar 1 5 1 6 so if you're doing the first line of i'm tore down well i'm tore down almost level with the ground yeah right so 1 2 3 4 second bar 2 3 4 third bar 2 3 4 fourth bar like that and now we have to move to the next chord so if you have to go to the f chord which is the 4 you do f c which is the 1 5 f c and then couple it with the 1 6 which is f d F D F D okay F C F D F okay that's your four chord rhythm and now coming to the five chord whenever you get the five chord which is just once in this 12 bar blues progression you do 1 5 G D 1 6 G E okay so with the 12 bar form and in the right hand just keep it very simple uh, hang on a bit with the right hand because we are going to do another proprietary blues rhythm in the right hand as well coming up very shortly for now we just hold the chord if you can if not just only do the left and then bring in the right so i want you to play the iconic left hand blues rhythm in the left and then hold the chord in the right that's pretty much the deal right now so it's pretty much the way we work fourth bar of the one and now four second bar back second bar of the one last line g f major and c let's now do it with some singing well i'm tore down almost level with the ground well i'm tore down almost level with the ground same bouncy rhythm well i feel like this oh well my baby can be found one more time well i'm tore down almost level with the ground and now we go to f second line tore down almost level with the ground yeah eh, 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 eh. Well I feel like this oh well my baby can be found yeah okay there's another thing you can do to embellish the left hand by adding eighth notes and blues has a very unique rhythm style in the sense that the eighth note is not played straight it's not done as da 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 it's done as da 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 it's always done like that da 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 so when you have to play the left hand rhythm with a little bit more punch or a little bit more dancey rhythmic vibe instead of doing for every chord you can end up doing eighth notes or quavers in swing so pa pa ba pa ba pa ba pa ba okay i hope you've got that also notice the tonality of my left hand there's little bit of staccato and legato going on 
okay i'm trying to keep my wrist very relaxed because this can hurt this can heat up your hand especially the forearm so try to relax your wrist when you play okay i'm also bouncing my wrist so that gives me a natural dynamics pa pa ba pa ba pa ba so if you can get that sound it makes it even more nice okay so you can double that and go down almost level with the ground adds a lot of flavor right and down just doubling the almost level with the ground right so that's what your left hand could do either this or double Okay so that was about the left hand I think we've made it sound very bluesy now moving on to the right hand so the right hand's going to play a very catchy rhythm called the charleston rhythm named after the composer who played it probably the first time okay so it goes something like this And the first thing you want to do when you practice the blues is try to snap or keep a count focused at a 1 2 3 4 a 1 2 3 4 a 1 right ignore the ones and the threes it has to always be a 1 2 3 4 in fact this is an important exercise to get cracking with now 3 4 a 1 2 3 for what's important to know about the charleston rhythm is when you play the on beat which is beat 1 you need to play that legato smooth and connected and when you play the off beats the and of the two in this case you're going to want to play it staccato 1 and 2 and 3 where you lift your hand up or just create a staccato sound 1 and 2 and 3 don't forget the 2 and the 4 feeling okay so get this first with maybe a simpler left hand 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and just hold that or play the pulse earlier the pulse was there now the pulse came here so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and right 1 and 2 and 3 so one bar with the charleston there will end up being okay and with charleston you can also make it even more interesting you can do the and of the one start at the off beat and then the next hit will be at the on of the three and remember what i said earlier when you hit the on beats that's 1 2 3 4 you should hit it legato and when you hit the off beats we follow that rule or objective to play it staccato so this is what i would call as the displaced charleston rhythm where you start at the end of the one and then go to the on of the three that will be something like this one and two and three and four and one and two while a normal charleston was right you can even combine that you can do displaced and then go to normal sounds like a like a vocal a cappella section or a heavy horn section pa to pa 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 and follow the blues next chord pa to pa f pa pa and back to pa 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 and then the pa 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 right so that's about the charleston rhythm and then you can do it with the left hand rhythm which we learnt as well you can do it with the simple left hand rhythm we learnt if you can put that together wow and then with singing even a bigger wow right you go well i'm chow down almost level with the ground yeah well i'm chow down yeah oh Level with the ground, the pop. Well, I feel like this. Well, my baby can be found. Pam, pam. Right. So there's a unique thing happening there and a unique thing happening there. Right. Harmonically and rhythmically, which is quite awesome. So it's a great exercise to practice chords, chord rhythms, and it's a great genre. So now that you guys have got the Charleston rhythm. either starting at the 1 or starting at the end of the 
or maybe then combine both those rhythms together, you can also make the chord in the right hand a little bit more spicy. Instead of playing just the simple, mundane, commonly used major chord, you could look at a dominant seventh chord. So let me show you how to form this dominant seventh chord. You take a major chord and add that dominant seventh note, which is a seven flat. So for C major, you need to add that B flat into all of your shapes. So if you play in this shape, the B flat comes there. In this shape, the B flat comes there. So if I'm in this shape, play C major and then tell yourself, how do I make it sound more bluesy or more colorful? Bring in the dominant seventh chord, which is B flat. And now if I want to do F, what is F's dominant seventh note? E flat. Okay, and then the G chord can add its dominant seventh, which is F. By doing this, it'll give your chords a lot more texture, right? So it'll sound something like this. Doing the Charleston. Okay. F chord, well, I'm tore down, yeah. Sounds very busy. When I feel like this. Pretty much everything you're going to do, left hand, right hand, chords, rhythm, time feel, scale, everything is going to be unique in the blues, okay? Thanks a ton for watching part two. In the next part, we are going to get to the most favorite part of it all, which is going to be how to make a piano solo using pretty much the blues form and then developing a solo using simple concepts like phrase building, using motif creation and of course the two iconic scales used for blues music. So head over to part three and if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share, comment on the video and it'll help our channel grow a great deal. Cheers.